Hi, this is Sam Mortensen, and I'm here to talk about Tome, which is a static site generator I built in Drupal 8. Um, before we jump in, I want to talk a little bit about what a stat static site generator is, because I don't assume everyone in Drupal knows. A static site generator is generally something that takes some structured source file, like Markdown, it puts it through some sort of build, and you end up with static HTML. If you've been in web development more than 10 years, you may think we're done with HTML, right? And we are done writing it by hand. We just, I think static site generators bring us back to a time where, you know, the end result of your website is completely static. It's an HTML file. You have no runtime. That's basically the, the idea behind it. You'll never write HTML. You'll be editing this nice structured source file. There's a lot of benefits to using a static site generator. And this is not just about Tome, it's about all static site generators. They're secure. Uh, in general, there's no production runtime to hack. You have no PHP running for someone to exploit. You have no Drupal code base. That doesn't mean nothing can be hacked, but the risk and consequences of being hacked is extremely low, I think. They're also really fast. You can think of hosting a static site as having Varnish or a CDN that always has cast request. You know, you can never get faster than just serving an HTML file. Deployments are also really simple. You know, with a static file, we all know how to host those. You can put them on an S3 bucket. You can put them on any like simple hosting platform. You can use GitHub pages. You don't have this complexity of what PHP or MySQL version do I need? Am I using caching? All of that kind of goes away. And I don't want to sound like a snake oil salesman and not mention that there's a lot of benefits of normal, you know, AMP sort of setups. If you have authenticated users, I'm not sure that static sites are a good fit for you. I know it's possible to use them both, but you may want to use a traditional stack. If you really like editing on production and instantly seeing your changes, then a traditional stack might be fit for you. Um, but kind of the, the main question, and this is phrased in a way that sounds negative, but it might not be, you know, do you need PHP and MySQL just sitting around waiting for requests? Uh, if all your site is is waiting to generate requests that can be cached on the CDN, why not just pre-generate all of your pages? That's kind of the question with the static site generator. And it's okay, you might actually need traditional hosting. I'm not trying to say that you don't need it or that Tome is better than every other way to host Drupal. It's just an alternative. So let's talk about Tome a little bit. Tome generates static HTML and static content. Um, this is kind of a new concept to Drupal. It means that everything from your config YAML files to your code base to your content is all stored as files in version control. And you only use Drupal locally. It's kind of like more like an application you open on your computer to edit content than some server you have running somewhere to log into. And this is a really big concept, and we'll go through it a little bit in a demo, but the, the short form is that Drupal is built from files. It syncs back to files, and at the end of your local session, you get static HTML to put somewhere. And then you can spin it all down. You know, you don't have to pay for Drupal hosting. It's not persistent. You get to use Git for everything. There's a lot of interesting benefits to this. This is kind of the less fun version. Uh, I'm not going to go over it because it's meant to be kind of funnily complicated, so you can pause it if you want to read through. So if we think about putting everything in Git, there's a lot of interesting changes. If you want to see what your site looked like in terms of theme, code, config, you can just check out a commit and build. If you're doing a new marketing campaign, you can do everything in a pull request and just merge it when you're ready to launch the campaign. If you have a lot of content editors, they can each have a fork. And you know, like I said before, everything's in Git, so you don't really need a persistent database or file system. Now, this isn't the only way to use Tome. I think when I first built Tome, I thought it was, and I got a lot of feedback from people that said, you know, I actually like using Drupal normally. I like having a server that people can log into. Um, I just don't want to host you know, dangerous, slow, insecure Drupal on production. So I split Tome into a lot of parts that you can use. If you use Tome, the one I've just described, it's kind of a Tome static and Tome sync combined. They're two sub modules. 
if you, but you can use them separately. So if you just want the HTML portion and all this stuff I'm saying about storing everything in Git scares you, that's okay. Uh, if you just want to store content in Git, like maybe you're doing an archive or you're doing something that I don't know about, you can just use Tome Sync. So there's a lot of options here that I'm giving you. So we're just going to jump right into a demo because it's a lot easier to explain concepts if you can see them. So we're going to jump into the demo. Uh, basically, we're going to create a new Drupal 8 site that uses Tome and kind of see what it looks like to use it locally and what the file system looks like. So I'm using the Getting Started guide on the Tome website. You can follow along if you go to the same URL. So first I'll make a composer-based Drupal site. And we'll install the composer dependencies. This takes a while, so I may skip forward. Okay, so now I have a new site, and I can run the init command. This will basically install some profile for Drupal and enable Tome. Uh, let's do the food magazine. I usually do the standard profile, but it doesn't look super presentable. So I've installed the Umami demo, demo profile and enabled Tome. Before we even use the site, let's just look what uh, our site structure looks like. So the, for the most part, this is a normal composer site. You may be used to seeing some of these files like config. Um, the new files from Tome are content and files. If we look in files, this contains all of the like raw files in the site. Because if you're building your site from scratch with Git, there you don't really want to commit a site's default files directory with all of the image styles and everything. Um, the other directory is content. And this contains all of the entities on your site. I know the file names can seem kind of terrifying, but the reason we use UUIDs instead of IDs is because across rebuilds and if multiple people have branches, IDs will conflict really, really fast, and UUIDs probably never will. Um, if we just pop into one of these, let's just pick any. It's basically a JSON normalized version of an entity. And so if you use REST or JSON API, this should look really familiar for you. It's using core normalization. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and make this a Git repo so we can see our changes better. I'm going to add everything. Oops. So now we should able, be able to more easily see changes as we use the site. Um, since Drupal's only used locally, I just use Drush Run Server. It's quite easy. Oh, and we're going to open a new tab so we can actually run Drush commands. And let's make sure it's, it's the same size, about. Those are my cats, if you can hear them. Okay, so now we're logged in, and let's make some changes to content. Um, since it's a demo and I'm overly confident, we're going to use Quick Edit. <laughs> um, so hopefully that just works the first time. So we're going to make a change to the homepage hero. Maybe we decided that it's not easy. It's actually really hard. So we'll save. And then if I go back to our project, and run git status, you can see there was a change because I changed that block. I could just commit it and say this pasta was hard to make. And now we have the change to content. Um, now I can fully spin down my Drupal site. I can delete this directory after I push, and we're good. And we can track our content changes in Git. Just to prove to you that it works, even though I'm pretty sure it does, uh, we're going to go ahead and drop the databases for this site. So now it should be super broken. So now I'll be really surprised. Okay, it's super broken. 
and we can run drush tome install. This is kind of what you run at the start of an editing session. Um, so it basically installs the profile that it thinks you used for tome, and then it'll do an initial import. Okay, so now we should have a fully built site that has that homepage change I made. So I'll refresh the site again. And great, it fully rebuilt the site. Um, and they did it all from that content config and files export directory. So this is really cool, but it's not the whole picture. Uh, now we actually need to generate static HTML. So to do that, you can run the drush tome static command. And this is, you know, kind of maybe dumber than you expect it to be. It just goes to every path in Drupal and does an internal request to try to generate HTML. It is a lot faster than w get recursive, if you were thinking that you could use that instead. And it also fixes up some paths to, to match uh, your static hosting site. So now we have a static site, uh, but I actually forgot to run the command that lets us preview it. So I'm going to pass this run server command. And now it'll actually open it up and let us see what the site looks like. I know it looks exactly the same, which is kind of the goal. Uh, but I can just verify that it's real HTML by doing something like that. I can take a look at the static directory local to, locally too. It's in this root level HTML directory. This is ignored by default because it's kind of assumed that this is you know, a build that you're going to push somewhere else. But there's probably use cases where you want to track this in Git also. So that's about it for how Tome normal, normally works. We're going to do even more demo and see what it looks like to use normal, traditional Drupal hosting and uh, just the static HTML portion of Tome, so none of this Git stuff, and actually how that gets hosted on production. It's a super demo. So I have this site on Pantheon that I've been using to test Tome in a more traditional hosting environment. Uh, it's locked down to the public, which is great because it's out of date. <laughs> and I hope it doesn't get hacked. Uh, but the idea with using Tome in a setup like this is you probably want an edit domain that's locked down, maybe with more than basic HTML. I mean, basic auth protection, maybe you want it behind a VPN or some proxy, but this seemed like a good setup. So this is a totally normal Drupal site. I want the HTTPS domain, hold on. So anyway, like I was saying, it's it's totally normal. It has this module Tome static enabled, which means you can generate static HTML. We're going to go ahead and make a change and generate static HTML and push that to our production host. Remember, this is just our content editing domain. This is where content editors will go into, but not where the actual public visitors will go, if that makes sense. So using quick edit again, it's my favorite module. Thanks, Wim. And we're going to use the UI this time to generate Tome. You know, I'm aware that not everyone likes the command line. It's not required to do everything. If you just use Tome static, you can totally just use the UI. So I'm going to generate a static site. It's got one of those great progress bars that resets to zero. It does this because a lot of pages have assets that need to be regenerated, like image styles that haven't been generated or pre-processed JS or CSS. So it's finished. Um, if you want, you could download the build right now and host it yourself easily. But we're going to use Netlify to host it. Um, before I jump into that, you can also use the UI to preview your site, just like that run server command I used. So you can click Preview. 
and you get this nice like preview session of the site. Again, it, I mean, it looks just like the Drupal site, but it's not, it's actually static HTML. So I think the site looks good, kind of a weird dummy image from another module I've made. I'll exit the preview and we're gonna host this for real on a free static hosting site called Netlify. I just use this because it's free and they have a nice API. <laughs> So you can give it a unique deploy title, the default's fine, and you can click deploy. And this will do some great deduping logic to determine what pages changed since the last push. It looks like only two changed, so that was really quick. And then you can view your deploy live with the URL it provides. Oh, that was embarrassing. I don't know why that happens. It's actually not, I know I always say it's not my code, but I think it's because Netlify takes a few seconds after you do a new deploy. I swear, you don't have to believe me, but that was just a fun hiccup. So now we're on Netlify. Luckily I have staging turned on for build. So this isn't the live site. It's kind of a generated uh, random staging site where I can preview what it looks like. I think it looks great and I wanna go live. So I can follow this other link that lets me publish the deploy. And go to Netlify. Yeah, you can see maybe this was that last build. It just didn't work. I should fix that. So you can go to your deploy, which is actually a draft deploy. It's got the same preview link we just used, but you can publish it from here. So I'm going to publish it and go live. I love these generated domains. Like that one. Um, it may have already deployed. OK, it's published. And then I can view the live Netlify site and we see the change. So this is pretty great. Um, it's really new technology. I'm, I'm new to Netlify and new to this, so uh, I know that last build failed. We'll really try to fix that. But anyway, this is just an idea of how you could use Tome Static and traditional hosting and uh, like past service for static sites to you know, do this whole picture of hosting. To me, when I made Tome, I thought everyone wanted, it, wanted to use it like this. Um, if you use it like this on the command line where everything's tracked in Git, the static hosting options are the same. You can use Netlify, you can use S3, uh, but how people edit content is really different. You know, people in Drupal aren't used to editing in Git, and that's going to be a big change for them. So uh, that's why I wanted to show you this Pantheon site, because you're probably a lot more familiar with it. So that's enough rambling on. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Uh, I don't think I have anything else from the presentation. At the end of this, I used to have a list of features that I'm working on, but I finished all the features. Uh, maybe I'll add one for the next one. Make Netlify deploys stable. <laughs> and we'll check that off the next time I do a presentation. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to take next steps on using Tome, there's a website called tome.fyi. It looks huge on my tiny Mac, uh, but it has everything you need to get started. You can see that guide I used, and you can also read all the hosting guides for how you can have your own traditional Drupal site with Netlify, or you can just use Tome, the normal Tome, on GitHub pages or Netlify. And the site's also built with uh, Tome. So if you want to contribute to the website, you can clone its repo and edit its content and send me a pull request. So that's about all I have. I hope you enjoyed. OK, see ya.